yeah, we started with Federer, Federer and Nadal. Mm -hmm. uh, do you follow tennis and and uh, and maybe yeah, what other sports uh, are you most interested in? Yeah, I mean, I do watch other sports, uh, and last few days I got to see quite some good ones. I, of course, the Man U Barcelona match was really beautiful. Um, I kind of thought it was hopeless for Federer on, gra on clay, so um, I had the feeling it, it, it somehow I could just couldn't see him beating Nadal on clay, and that's kind of what happened. Um, and then I watched a little bit of the Formula One as well, but uh, of course it had a very weird end. So. But is it something you would like to see uh, in, in rehearsal like in your, uh, this, this tennis match? Are you going to watch it afterwards or, some, or, or is it just something you only want, uh, want to see uh, live? Generally, I'll, I'll only see it live. I don't think I'll watch the match knowing the result and so on. It's, uh, it takes a bit out. But uh, I, I did catch a little bit before going to the game. So. Okay, the next one uh, was about Monty Python. Uh, we can briefly uh, stop with that. But uh, is there is there any uh, scene you would like you like the most of their uh, their work or maybe the movie? Well, uh, because you're a fan, aren't you? Sure, I like Monty Python and uh, uh, well, okay. I think you know once Carlson and me had a good time with uh, the Pope and Michelangelo, so that was a good one. But of course, there are many moments I can pick from. Let's say the Life of Brian, which are also very funny. Yeah, there's actually going to be uh, a musical based on that one. <laughs> Are you just in that? Yeah, I mean, one of the songs I actually have uh, on my computer is uh, Always Look on the Bright Side of Life. So. Okay, uh, yeah, Beatles or Stones, uh, is this your taste or do you actually like things? I listen to a bit of both, but uh, I mean, I, right now Stones is very fresh in my head because last year during Sofia we were just the team had it on almost all the time. So. Also with Rammstein, wasn't it? Rammstein and some Stones. But they started getting um, some Stone songs, every remake ever done on YouTube. So we really, we listen to it up to here. Okay. Well, let's get carry your niche in because you've been asked too many times about the, the young talents already, I guess. Um, yeah, talent or experience. Uh, the fact that, for example, you and Vasily and Boris are still at the absolute top. Is this a matter of, of, of experience or are you just also extreme talent? I don't know. I actually liked Boris's answer. He said in all this attention people pay to talents, they, they almost seem to assume that we had all disappeared and they seem surprised that we are around. Uh, so I think it's because they forgot about us that they seem surprised that we are playing. But uh, naturally, um, I mean, I, I still think um, People like Aronian and Carlson are just very, very impressive. But, uh, well, as long as we can fight and we still enjoy the game, then uh, it seems to work. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, um, Gervon, of course, uh, he called it fight uh, in, uh, in Kazan. Um, how do you look forward to this, this match? Because uh, he's known as a very classical uh, player with a huge uh, amount of, uh, of chess knowledge. What will be different in your preparation, uh, for example, uh, compared to uh, working against uh, Tupalov and, and Kramnik? Well, we'll really get down to details a bit later, once we know the venue and all. But I think we can already see that Boris really can peak when, uh, for the big... And in fact, this whole cycle, the way he came through from the World Cup all the way till uh, uh, the candidates has been just very, very impressive. And uh, I mean, he, he's well known already as one of the uh, uh, best prepared opening players. Um, I mean, even in the 90s, we all sort of looked up to Boris's preparation. So he's, he's very good in that and uh, he'll just be a very tough match. But I haven't gotten to details yet. Somehow it's also a bit too early. Once we have a venue and a thing, uh, and I have to play tournaments as well. So we'll have to try and balance that. Yeah. I, uh, I found a magazine actually from '95, uh, the, the new chess magazine, which, after which you just qualified uh, for your match against Kasparov. You just beat uh, Garakamsky in Las Palmas. And uh, in the interview with Yergyan, you, you, you say, uh, given the amount of knowledge and chess theory there is in these days, you can't help but do some work on certain systems and types of opening work. But these days, it's not just opening work, it's how it connects to the middle game, just trying to get the position you want. And you, you recently spoke about these things also in a, in a chess-based uh, uh, interview. Compare it, with, yeah, we're back in 2011, it's, it's even more ridiculous. So, yeah, how do you look at this? Do, do we have to change something? Is, 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 
they're getting too much these days? Yeah, well, that's a good point. I mean, thanks for bringing up this interview because then it helps my answer a little. But I would say that uh, right now when we're all staring at the amount of preparation we have nowadays, it's useful to remember to read an old interview and see that we, we were concerned before. I mean, right now, 1995 feels to me some golden era where we woke up in the morning and we just went and played whatever we felt like. Uh, but uh, of course, if you read the interviews, then we were complaining how much theory there was then. So uh, it's a question of perspective, but it's true. Um, there's just a hell of a lot of theory. Okay. Uh, we already uh, talked about uh, the, the semi uh, rapid uh, format they use in the on, so, uh, so let's skip that. But although there is some relation also with Kazan, in fact, because um, the losing uh, finalist, uh, John Grishuk, actually declared uh, that to him uh, classical chess is, is, is dying. And uh, yeah, what's your opinion on that? Uh, do you think there will always be a good enough audience uh, uh, for, uh, for classical chess? Or is it inevitable that uh, to keep uh, interest and, and sponsors uh, we have to uh, cut down uh, the time limit? I don't know. There's, I think there are still very interesting tournaments. Um, I mean, the death of classical chess keeps coming up. I, I think that's too extreme. What happens is in certain situations, everybody, when uh, there's too much at stake, it seems that people can go into safety mode and then it can... Uh, but I don't think we should press any sort of panic buttons just yet. Um, and I would say that this thing of whether it's rapid or classical is also a bit dated. Right now, it's just become the norm, even in the World Championship. You play classical, you can't separate yourself, play a rapid as well. You can't separate yourself, play blitz. Um, so I, I see them as sort of one continuum rather than uh, totally different and incompatible formats. Um, so essentially my answer is uh, a lot of trends are happening anyway. Uh, people are experimenting with different scoring methods, different thing, huge variations in prices, whatever. And it, it copes. I mean there are still very, very exciting and nice tournaments happening. So we shouldn't uh, exaggerate as well, but uh, of course, some, sometimes you get some really dead events. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think you uh, depict uh, in the end no Sophia rule to, to Sophia rule. Uh, can you elaborate on that? Uh, well, uh, I understood your yes and no questions as what I would like more. And, and of course, uh, uh, it's slightly easier, but it's not really a preference. I mean, if, if an organizer wants uh, these rules, it's fine by me. Uh, so it's not really a thing, but of course, uh, left to my own devices, I would rather be able to stop when I can and so on, but uh, uh, it wasn't a strong preference. But do you uh, agree with, uh, with Vladimir and, and Silvio Danilov that, that maybe it should have been in, in, there in Kazan, uh, maybe also related to, the, to some very quick draws there? I don't know. I think always right after an event people have ideas based on that event but uh, it's it's probably better to uh, um, think it through a little bit I, I mean I, I feel again there's a tendency to say everything was wrong in Kazan let's do something drastic let's uh, mix it up I, like I said I had no real problem uh, uh, with Sofia rules but um, I think at least in, uh, my feeling even before Kazan was uh, no matter what happens we're going to feel a little bit bad because these are really eight very strong players um, and, and this was a very strong cycle and whichever you, way you cut it at the end there'll be only one left and, you, and people will have some misgivings and I think that's kind of what happened. And of course you are the most successful player in, in a wide variety of, uh, of formats so does this mean that you, you probably don't even know yourself what, what could be a, the best system because people are really talking about the system again, the system for qualifying. Um, again, I would say that uh, we have diverse systems. Uh, so whenever I, and and many systems are successful. I mean, so why can say was very successful with with this model of uh, three tournaments. Um, I mean, before we said sort of A group, B group, and so on, but, I, but I would say even now it's almost two incredibly strong groups, and then uh, one pretty good group. And then you have uh, other tournaments with four players, six players, thing, and many of them are interesting in their own way. So I think we shouldn't focus too much on the format. Sometimes the right dynamic starts. Uh, it's true that this happens more often in tournaments, but uh, matches also have a special kind of um, 
character. Maybe there should have been six games or eight games. But everything will have a consequence. If you make it six games, you'll probably have to add more rest days and spread the event out over a couple of months. You have eight games each match, it's probably better like in the 90s, where um, you play one set of candidates matches, then, or I mean, not the 90s, but just last century. Uh, you play one set of matches, then you break for a couple of months, then the next set of matches, then you break for a couple of months, like they used to. But every sort of system you have will have consequences. So if you have these candidates matches going on for a very long time, you're going to look at a th three year cycle very fast. Um, so I would say there is going to be no perfect solution and right now, okay, there were probably too many short draws in Kazan and everybody's a bit uh, upset. but. Let's see if it's a tendency before we go uh, overboard. And I have no real uh, problem with the uh, system of the candidates, but my own attitude is um, uh, if somebody tells me this is the system, this is the one I play, and I, I, I try to be agnostic in this. Um, I find that the best thing is just to get on with my job and not uh, worry about this. Okay. The last subject, uh, the last thing I want to discuss is the one, maybe the most topical one, uh, because uh, yeah, uh, we, we brought the news on Saturday uh, that there was yet another cheating case. Uh, there was a German uh, chess player caught uh, in a German championship mm -hmm. using, a, using a mobile phone. And uh, yeah, there have been uh, many debates about this, also because of the French case, of course. And um, yeah, what do you think is, 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 is necessary? Is, is, do you think some real measures are necessary? And, for example, uh, especially in open tournaments, it's it's very difficult uh, because it's yeah you basically have to search players for phones and everything and uh, and then there is the, the debate about whether a 15 minute delay of the broadcast but this is more for top events of course so, yeah what, what are your what are your thoughts on this? Um, I don't know. Generally, the problem seems to flare up every few years. So we had some problems maybe seven eight years. I mean, 15 minutes solves some issues. Um, I mean, that's true. But at the same time, I'm wondering if um, you have uh, online spectators and some of them know that the match is already over and who won, and then they have to watch the last time to scramble after that. But uh, at least 15 minutes seems to have some effect on uh, cheating, especially in critical moments. Uh, it's quite a big lag. But I don't, I don't know. I think. It, in the end, it also comes down to the ethics of uh, players involved. I mean, you put in some systems, and if someone is caught, then you give them a harsh penalty. But um, in fact, I was reminded again with this Austrian tennis player that it's not only really our sport uh, that has to deal with this issue, but somehow uh, also with all this betting money coming in and all. I don't know if that's a big problem in chess yet, but I'm saying in other sports also these uh, these things keep on re coming up and. Uh, it's actually quite depressing because um, uh, it's nice to think of sport as a refuge. Anyway, to answer your question, again, I don't think there will be most technology races tend to be arms races. Uh, I think as soon as you come up with one method, some guy will come up with some clever system. But the problem isn't that bad. I mean, at least I have the feeling most top tournaments are fine, and uh, thing, and I've gone a couple of years without feeling bad or looking over my shoulder. So uh, I think yeah, uh, I think at least think then. could be yeah. Um, I, I, again, like I said, anything will degenerate into an arms race between uh, the guy who wants to cheat and the thing. Um, so I would go with some combination. But I, it's, I mean, you can try 15 minutes, but I'm sure there'll be workarounds. Okay, uh, thanks a lot for the interview. You you have a, a few uh, summer months. Uh, off again, uh, but there will be some, some very interesting top tournaments uh, played. Uh, there's Basna soon and, and, and there's Dortmund and, and Biel. Uh, are you following these games uh, live? Uh, when, when yes, of course. I mean, except when the time difference is too much. Uh, I'm following them quite intensely. So, for instance, the US Championship I didn't follow because the time difference in India was quite big. Uh, or I, I'd catch a bit but then go to sleep. But uh, most tournaments in Europe are the East, uh, of course, I follow. Okay. But you will have enough time when uh, besides that to... Uh, well, we'll see how much time he gives me. <laughs> so. Okay, thanks a lot. Thanks.